Hello again, uh, partial fraction decomposition, third lesson, where we're going to do distinct linear and quadratic factors, and I already wrote my example up here. you got to make sure the numerator is of a lower degree than the denominator. That's uh, degree 2, x times x squared is degree 3, so it fits. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this one uh, together is so that you can see the difference between a linear, distinct linear factor and a distinct quadratic factor. And this one's quadratic because it's got an x squared. This one's a linear because it's you know, degree 1. If it was a repeating quadratic factor, you'd have to do the same thing with uh, repeating linear factors, except you'd have to keep writing out one of our quadratic factors. Pretty interesting in its own right. Let me go ahead and show you how to do this. I want to uh, rewrite this, first of all. And here's how you rewrite it. You've got to be careful here, because a lot of students make this mistake. Uh, so I've got x squared plus 3x minus 1 all over all this. I want to rewrite it. It rewrites itself as uh, x plus 1. That's the uh, you know, denominator, that's a distinct linear factor, plus, now this is a quadratic factor, so it's different. If it was x squared plus 2 quantity squared, you have to write x squared plus 2 in quantity, and then plus x squared plus 2 squared. Same thing with the linear, but we're not going to do that because I'm not going to make it that difficult, because I can't finish that in 15 minutes explaining. I can do it, but definitely not finish it explaining so. Anyways, x squared plus 2. Now what's really interesting is for a linear factor, your numerator is just a variable. You know, if you repeat it, it'd be a, b, c, whatever. For this one, it's a variable times x and then plus another variable. Uh, I've already used a, so let's use b, x, and then plus another variable all together. So it's different. A distinct quadratic factor is different than a distinct linear factor. And by the way, if it was x squared plus 2, uh, quantity squared, then you'd have to write plus, you know, x2 plus 2 in quantity squared, and this one would be dx plus e. So that's really all there really is to it. I'm not going to sit there and do that though. And that's all equal to this bad boy. Oh, I didn't write it down. So I'm just turning this into this. I'll go ahead and write that step down, although I neglected it. So x squared plus 3x subtracted by 1 over x quantity x plus 1 times the quantity x plus 2, x squared plus 2, pardon me, is equal to this bad boy right here. a over x plus 1, and then plus bx plus c over x squared plus 2. I should have just rewrote it there, but I didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get rid of the denominators, and how I do that is I multiply every term in this equation by this denominator. And I went ahead and I did that in the second lesson. And what basically happens, well not basically, what happens is when I multiply all of this by x plus 1, x plus 2 quantity squared, is I get x squared plus 3x minus 1, those cancel, equals, okay, well that one's done, but the x plus 1's done, but not the x squared plus 2, so what I got is a, and then x squared plus 2, and plus, the x squared plus 2's cancel, but not the x plus 1, so what I got is bx plus c, put that into quantity, times x plus 1. Okay. So I've got to do the same kind of approach to it. I've got to come up with distinct x values that will work, that will at least cancel out the a, the b, or the c to try to make it a little bit easier. Uh, there is no x value I can substitute into x squared plus 2. That's a problem. Uh, so what I gotta do is I gotta use like a uh, elimination method afterwards. Uh, people say, what, what can you use too? No, because uh, any positive or negative value you plug in for x, nothing's actually gonna cancel out this term, so you gotta kind of figure it out that way. However, if I put in uh, negative one, what's gonna happen is the b and the c will cancel out and I can figure out my a. So that's what I'm gonna do. If x equals negative one, and what I got is negative 1 plus 3, at negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 1 is, now that's 1, that cancels, so it's negative 3 equals negative 1 is 1, negative 1 squared is 1 squared, sorry, 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, so that's 3a. Uh, that's a 0, cancels out, bam! It's not all going to be that easy though. Divide by 3 on both sides, a equals negative 1. 
So when I substitute in x equals negative 1, I get a equals negative 1. Well, now I've got to figure out another value I can go ahead and substitute in. Um, you know, there's, there's a host of values you can plug in if you want to. I would suggest uh, 0, because 0 is always the easiest one. So when we do, if x equals 0, uh, there are no other values that will cancel out all the terms. I mean, every term except for 1, so got to do what you got to do. If x equals 0, then I got 0 squared plus 3, blah, 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 and that's negative 1 equals, okay, we're going to substitute in the a value, and the a value is negative 1. So 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and then I got plus bx plus c times x plus 1. Well, if that's 0, that's 1, if that's 0, then all I got is c. So I got a plus c. So c equals 1. Oh, that was a lot easier than I thought. I thought I was going to have to do a linear system there. I didn't have to. <laughs> ah, stuff happens. So c equals 1, a equals negative 1. I want to figure out a b value. I can't plug in 0, because if I do, it's going to cancel out my b, as I've already shown. If I plug in negative 1, it's going to cancel out my b, so it's not going to work. So I've got to figure out a value that's not negative 1, and it's not 0. The easiest value I can think of is 1. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the c and the a value back in. So if x equals 1, I got 3 plus 1 is 4 minus 1 is 3. So 3 equals my a value is negative 1, my x value is 1. So that's 3, that's negative 3. Uh, plus my x value is 1, so that's 2. My Vicky c value Collins, is 1. Please go to the sorting room. Vicky, please go to the sorting room. It's on such a roll, too. So if x is 1 and c is 1, so that's 2 uh, times, you know, well, that's b, that's 1, so that's bx. I'm going to just write that out. So that's b plus 1 times 2. Looks like I can't really figure that out. So 3 equals negative 3 plus, that's 2b plus 2. Pardon me, momentarily elapsed there. 3 equals negative 1 plus 2b. So, uh, add 1 to both sides. 4 equals 2b. Divide by 2 on both sides. b equals 2. So b equals 2, c equals 1, a equals negative 1. Um, let me go ahead and write that down really quickly before I erase it like I did last time. A equals negative 1, B equals 2, C equals 1. So those are my values. When I go ahead and I substitute it back into this problem right here, which is essentially what I'm going to do, I want to erase all this. This fraction right here turns out to be A over X plus 1. Well, A is negative 1. So it's negative 1 over x plus 1 plus bx plus c, b is 2, c is 1, so it's 2x plus 1, over x squared plus 2. Finito. That's that. And I'll go ahead and prove it right now, too, because I haven't actually proved any one of them. So I'm going to multiply this one by this one and this one by this one to get the same denominator. So that's what I'm going to do x squared plus 2, x squared plus 2. Now when I have to multiply x plus 1. So that's uh, negative x squared minus 2 plus, uh, that's 2x squared plus 2x plus x, or 1x plus 1. And it's all over this denominator of x squared plus 2 over x plus 1. Two x squared minus x squared is x squared. Two x plus one x is three x. Uh oh. Uh, negative two plus one is negative one. Or x squared plus two. 
x plus 1. Ah, I should have wrote it the other way. But that's fine. It's the same thing. x squared plus 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 2 plus 1. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a fraction and splitting it into multiple fractions. And this is my answer, by the way, this blue one. But it's pretty cool when you use it for integration and stuff, you know, du over u and all that other good stuff. Yeah. Anyways, all that other good stuff. So, yeah, with that said, that's pretty much it. I hope you found that helpful, at least in this particular respect. There's more partial fractions, but not really. This is a good basic introduction. Uh, repeating quadratics is the same thing as repeating linears, except you have to put in multiple, um, you know, variables, I guess, B, C, D, E, like two instead of one. Yeah, so that's all I got for right now. I hope that was helpful. Have a good day. Goodbye.